Hi there and welcome back to Lauren the Amazon Princess. I'm Byron and apparently there's an assassination attempt going on here. Looks like we're the victims. Uh, just the two of us, fine. Against three of those. Okay. Well, we don't have much. We can't. Oh, totally uncalled for. What's that? What's that? Scared. Target's defense value is reduced by 25% for the duration of the effect. Come on, you're a princess. How can you be scared of a few? What are those? Bandits. Yeah. So, I have a hand, actually. I have a bow? Oh yes, uh, what is that here? A standard crossbow. You don't have that, do you? No, why don't you have that? Oh, she's a warrior blade master and I'm a warrior hero. That's the difference. Okay, I get it. This is why she has those nifty sword skills and I... Well, I'm not a blade master, I don't have sword skills. That makes sense now. What does that do? Uh, it's a common jam. Okay. So, I don't have, do not have any other weapons apparently. I have this shield though. I'm, I'm thinking about equipping the shield actually because... Um, oh, I don't know. This is the question, do I want more defen defense? Um, or do I want to cut them down quicker? Normally the best defense is a good offense, but I, I, I mean she has the skills to dual wield and give the full attack potential of the second weapon. I do not have that. Second thought. Eight? Why don't you use that instead? See? Doing more damage now. Haha. Uh -huh. Good. Um, I will never have that. So I will try the shield now. Cool. Anyway. So, you're still scared, but we're still standing, I'm uh, sitting on a lot of HP. We have to worry. Ow! Totally uncalled for. And the first one is done. So, I guess that, no, this is the amount of mana that they have at the level. Okay. So we could heal her if we wanted to, but there's no need to right now. She has a lot of HP. Uh, what what happened to you here? You are no. We let's not do this. Go away. You're staggered. That's cool. What is that? That's new. Confused. Okay, the target's magic value is reduced by 25%. I don't care about that. What happened now? She was put in the back row. Okay, not the biggest problem. Maybe the kind and come. Fourth. Thank you. So, um... How many hit points do you have? 109 of 90. I have those nice little. S no, no, they're fine. You attack. They always push her back. So let's see. I have um, this nice little spell. At least 50%. 100%. 100 HP. She doesn't even need that. No, oh, why did you do that? Hit her one more time, please, so that I can actually heal her. Fine, I heal her now. Ah, feeling better? 
everywhere I go. I don't know. Why are they? Oh, we level up. Very good. So we put one more point in here, then we have ten in will, and the rest goes into strength. Sadly, no skill points. And we get thirty-eight gold coins, I guess. After the first wave is finished, Draco and Dora burst into the room. Princess Lauren, Saren, what's all the ruckus? We heard noises and came as quickly as we could. You're a bit late, actually. There wasn't enough time for their conversation to continue, though. A new group of enemies started to materialize before them. Their forms seemed to solidify before their very eyes. Um, Saren tensed instinctively, knowing that there was sorcery at play. The adversaries had materialized were none other than a few goblin were none other than a few goblins and a giant hulking overlord. It's Grub. The goblin shaman who captured you? Yes, be careful. His magic is very powerful. Not even one tree tall. Hmm. Magic sh magic. We can handle a few greenies by ourselves. Dora pulled out the short bow and an arrow. Indeed. Boss fight. Okay. Okay, so we put you um, back here, I guess. Or maybe. I don't know. Are you better protected here? Or doesn't it matter? Oh! Uncalled. What the fuck is that? Ooh, frozen. We get 20 HP damage each turn. That's not nice. Let's save again. Okay. Who is first? Dora's first. What can you do? You have a ranged attack or an aimed shot. Okay. You use an aimed shot. Um. You use a fireball. I hope this is slightly uncomfortable. So you're staggered. Who's next, Lauren? So let's see, okay. Um you could use a fire no a fireball this time on that. I hope this is slightly uncomfortable. Shit! It's totally uncalled for. And you're dead. Okay, let's see. You're down to 15 mana. I like how you're in front. Um, you might wanna heal. Do you still have a fireball? No. Again. No, you heal her, please. What is that? 
target is unable to perform any action except defending or using items from the inventory. That's totally not nice. Then you defend. And you also defend. And you cut him down. Keep up next time. Thank you. Ah, yeah, his mana has regenerated. I could cast the firewall again. Try this on for size. I guess you're going down. They should have surrendered when they had the chance. Okay, that wasn't so difficult. And um, Dora and Draco can level up. We get a stuff of storms, a vest of mirrors, and a few agates. Agates, how you might pronounce it. So you're a thief. You probably won't skill, right? Ah, what do you have? Flaming torch. Okay, you need certain effects for that to work. Poison type. Okay, you you need certain ailments on the enemies to use those skills. So that big shot, snipe. Ooh, this is nice. Rain of Arrows. Okay, I can get that. I need one of those first before I can get Rain of Arrows. So I guess I take that. Characters are... Enemies are quite often triggered uh, or staggered actually yes. so I guess I can take that and oh, I could increase the defense value that's nice too She does a little more damage, 10% more base damage and 10% more accuracy. That's not really much. I'll, I'll take this then. Well, I guess I need both of them to learn that. Is that correct? Because you already have that, right? I could pick that. I don't want to yet. So I guess I need both of them to... Okay, then I'll take that. Okay. And what about you, my little magic casting friend? You need willpower, of course, since you're a mage. And um, what do we have here? Fireball, AoE. Oh, this is all AoE, just depending, you know, using different kind of elemental stuff. Now, this is actually uh, it's a defensive spell. So I will upgrade the firewall first, I guess, with that here. Concentration. Mm, this is nice too. Here's one ailment. This is nice. He has decent spells, but I'm. I will increase ball the fireball first. Cool. After a series of attacks from the party, Grob finally gave up. The creature collapsed, struggling to breathe. Kill it. 
but it's done. You've lost. Do you have anything to say before I kill you? Don't ask question. Kill it. Just one thing. Grub lifted his staff and crawled an incantation to cast a spell over the entire group. Draco had no time to protect him with an anti-curse and the group was instantly paralyzed. Why didn't you do that before the battle? You could have killed us easily. Lauren struggled against the spell but Grub sorcery was too much even for her. You may have managed to defeat me this time but this is far from over. I have another surprise for you. The dead goblins and thugs whom the group had killed were changing form turning into what looked like city guards. Though they were in a pool of blood, the guards' uniforms were unmistakable. We are we're in serious trouble now. No, actually, you're not. I do hope you like humans, Amazon Queen. You're all going to rot in the Empire's prison now. That's kind of weird. I mean, the game seems to be assuming that one human guard cannot be differentiated from another human guard. I mean, come on. It's, it's not like, I mean, those are people those guards. They have friends and family. It's not like they wouldn't realize that all of a sudden there's this, uh, like five or six additional guards that nobody has ever seen before that are wearing those uniforms now. It's not like they're on a guard roster or anything. So even if there are dead people in guard uniforms now, everybody would know that this is not one of the guards of the city because they don't have comrades and friends and colleagues and superiors. Nobody knows them. Oh, I know you. I've seen you before. Grub disappeared, fading into thin air just as he had appeared. His screams were enough to alert local guards to come running to see what had happened. This is bad. No, we can explain that. Last time, Grub, he's foiled me again. You'd think I'd know better by now. We have more to worry about right now. Halt! Lower your weapons. Despite the demands of the guards, Lloyd had no intention of sin surrendering. She tried to resist as the soldiers swarmed around them, shouting obscen obscenities. But it was futile. There were too many of them, and soon everyone's hands were shackled behind them, and they were pushed through the streets to their fate. Unhand me at once! Caesar's struggling wench. Wench? You will die this day! Your Majesty, no. Fighting will only make us look guilty. Just let them take us in. I promise I can get us out. You promise? Dwarf's honor. That's nonsense. I can't promise... You can't promise to get us free from a jail cell. Yeah, I can. I bet you ten gold I can. Guard pushed Zern forward harshly and he stumbled forward with a groan. Listen, I can cast a flash spell to blind them all right now. It'll give us more than enough time to escape. We can take horses and seek refuge with the elves and druids. They're friendlier than these guys by far. What are you guys whispering? Shut up! After the guard moved back to restraining Lauren, Saren inched back to Draco and Dora. But the Empire? One of those guys? Pff, bunch of big meanies, really. They're just enslavers, you know? No trial or anything. But we can escape right now with my magic. This was a key decision addressed upon their shoulders at that late hour of the night. While their journey was still just in its early stages, the importance of this choice was unparalleled. But they had to make the decision quickly, and that is exactly what they did. Um, I'd rather, if I can flee now, I guess I'd rather do that than maybe flee later. So, we follow Draco's plan and run to the elves. Throwing caution to the wind, Lorne hurriedly accepted Draco's plan. Through the fury, the, through the furious, fury chaos that ensued, the group was able to escape the guards and get out of the city just as they had hoped. Wait, do we still have our equipment? The group was silent and very somber after they made their escape. They knew very well that the gravity of their decision they had made that night could very well come back to haunt them. The Empire was a dangerous enemy, but it was impossible to guess how greatly their mission would have been delayed if they had been arrested. Be ready for anything, we are approaching the outskirts of the forest. We must all stay vigilant. They did not slow their pace until they entered the forest. The trees seemed to grow larger the deeper they traveled inside, and soon signs of an exotic culture began to spring up. Carved bark, marked paths, old campfires, and abandoned tree houses. Though they had only begun to breach the forest, they were almost instantly surrounded by elven guards. 
Dozens of long-eared spouts, no, scouts sprang from the bushes and trees with bows and swords alike aimed at the party. Dora and Draco looked around worriedly, but Saren's eyes remained fixed on Lauren, who was standing her ground. Saren did his best to emulate her aura of confidence, though it was no easy task. State your business here and quickly. My name is Lauren and I'm an Amazon. I have come to this forest in search of my mother. And I'm Byron that I need to drink something. Hold on for a second. We harbor no ill will against the fair and knowledgeable elves. We simply need to pass through this area to reach our destination. The elves looked to each other before finally turning their hardened gazes back onto Lauren. They lowered their weapons and Saren relaxed. Come with us, hands off of your weapons. The group traveled with the elves, walking with their ranks almost as prisoners. And here I thought we escaped prison. Well, as they say, out of the cauldron into the fire. Draco laughed awkwardly and looked to Saren for at least a small smile. But none came. I thought it was funny. We're not prisoners, they're just escorting us. It was a joke, don't you know how to laugh? I laugh when I hear something funny. Oh, alright, I see how it is, mister. I'll make you laugh someday. This will all be safe, won't it? Wait, I, is he actually hitting on him? I kinda get the impression. You have my word, to, word dwarf. You don't have to worry. Ah, good. Not that I was worrying or anything. They walked for a long time deeper into the forest until light could be seen through the canopy. Almost out of nowhere, a city formed within the trees. Saren and Lauren alike were instantly amazed at this foreign culture. They were ushered into the city quickly and approached by more elves. They claimed to be searching for a missing person. An elf with a crossbow flicked his ponytail over his shoulder. She can fix that. Can't have these people wandering around the forest to take them to her. Are you sure? Blame me if she gets mad. The elves moved to leave. The crossbow elves stopped to scowl at Saren, however. It made no sense to him, as there was no reason why he would uh, why he would earn his hate so quickly. They had barely met. Saren shrugged it off. You're about to meet a very important person, our elder druid. She has a power that she can use to help you. If you are to meet her, you must promise to show her great respect. Of course. We would be very grateful. Then follow us, but know that we are keeping an eye on you. They traveled to the edge of the forest again. Eventually, they came to the base of a giant oak tree that was hollowed out. Cern looked up in awe at the size of the tree as they got closer to it. Even the branches were impressively enormous. He could recall seeing a tree of s he could not recall seeing a tree of such a size in quite a long time. Stop gawking. S sorry. Oh hello. Well, those uh, plant-like branches are conveniently draped across your body. As they got closer, they caught sight of a graceful woman who looked tangled in the very vegeta vegetation that surrounded her. The elves who let them all, who let them all show their respect for her by bowing deeply. She must have been the elder druid. Out of instinct, Saren immediately bowed to her as well. Saren looked over to see Lauren standing rigidly unmoved by any need to show the elder respect. Your grace, your promise? Lauren shook as if she were in trance, just remembering her vow to the elves to respect the elder. She met Saren's eyes briefly in thanks before bowing as the others did. I suppose she is really beautiful, huh? Can't you keep it in your pants for a few seconds? Keep what in my pants? Yes, she is very, very beautiful. Lorne looked over at Sauron with surprise. Of course he would find such a woman attractive. She was not bothered by his forward attraction. The druid rose from her seat almost, and almost seemed to glide towards them. The grass beneath her sprouted small flowers where she walked as if she were Mother Nature herself. There was one thing that stood out to all of them, especially Lorne, about this forest woman. Not only was she beautiful, but she did not look old at all. Elder, we found this group of travelers in the forest. They are seeking guidance. She smiled at them and the party seemed to sigh in unison. Hello, fair travelers. I am the Elder Druid Mirth. 
I would be happy to impart any knowledge that I can to you, though I mostly know of only the forest and its magic. May I ask why you have sought me out? I am an Amazon and my name is Lauren. I am searching for my mother. Is there any way you might be able to help us find her? We would be very appreciative if you could assist us. She's being unusually nice. It was true, Saren looked at Lauren skeptically with a faint shadow of jealousy. She was treating this milf with more respect than anyone she had ever met with before. I see. I understand your concerns, and I see that you mean no harm with the search. It sounds like a very honorable cause that you are going to such great lengths to fulfill. Then can you help us? Surely your divination powers could give us a hint to where Lauren's mother might be. Divination? With the ability to see what my eyes cannot. I can search the world with only my thoughts, though this is not an easy process. Unfortunately, I cannot perform this ritual at the moment. But why not? Nerf's expression darkened and she sighed before she began her explanation. It would be my deepest pleasure to help if I could, but there's a group of rogue elves who are disturbing the forest spirits and I cannot even close my eyes without hearing the forest screaming. Divination is impossible. Sam was about to ask you the question, but Lauren beat him to it. Want us to get rid of those elves for you? Moth looked rather surprised by her offer, but suddenly frowned. The only way to stop the disturbance would be to find and defeat Mesfit, their leader. We shall do it then. New quest. Okay, 300 XP. I should warn you that he is no novice when it comes to the bow and arrow. He will stand no chance against the great Lauren. Ron looked over at him with something that almost looked like embarrassment, but it couldn't be. I'm very impressed by your bravery. It seems our meeting has been very fortuitous. The spirits did not lie when they said that aid was near. May I accompany you on your excursion to defeat Mesfit? Ron looked at Saren and he nodded. Since he is the slave, since when is he calling the shots? It would definitely be a good idea. We would be glad to have you come with us, Druid Milf. It would be a pleasure to travel with you. And the mage Druid is now our party member. Wonderful, it is settled. We shall embark in the morning. Please accept my deepest gratitude for agreeing to help me. The forest has cried for too long. It's understandable. This interference must be very burdensome. It is. But for tonight, I'm sure you all need to rest. You can stay in the elves village tonight and prepare. Shall we leave at dawn? As the sun rises then. Wilf smiled and nodded to one of the guards. They walked in silence to the elven camp. After getting settled into their tree bunks it was announced that Murf had arrived to entertain the party. They gathered to receive her. But she was not alone. She came in the company of some nymphs. Youthful and seemingly flawless women with honey skin. Murph's own loveliness still stood out even when in their extraordinary company. These are a gift to you, Lauren, of the Amazons. Lady Murph knows quite a bit about Amazons, it seems. Dora slapped Draco and he groaned, rubbing his arm. The dwarf woman was surprisingly strong. They will entertain you tonight if they please you. Saren felt a burning sensation in his chest at the thought of his mistress with these nymphs. Jealousy! Um, no, I'm actually calling dibs on the Amazon Princess. Isn't this rather inappropriate? What do you mean? It's a gift to show our appreciation for the help you will be giving us. Lauren needs to rest and have plenty of strength for the journey. This is a serious quest we are not something frivolous. Yeah, and if someone's gonna mess with her, it's gonna be me. Lauren paused for a moment before responding, evidently thinking over her answer. You're right. Thank you very much for the gift, Elder Druid, but I must decline. I understand. Please get plenty of rest tonight. Dawn will be upon us quickly. Thank you for your hospitality. Lord and Sun looked at each other briefly before parting ways. Um, so, you probably go to the back row too, right? Since you're a mage. Ta-da! Meanwhile, in the northern border of the region, an evil force was crafting sinister plans. The party was still innocently unaware of this creature's actions, but it was only a matter of time until that would change. 
a heavily armored mysterious being sat on its throne comfortable in the hot room despite the volcano's la lava flowing so near. This evil thing's name was Frost, a name that would come to be spat and whispered in fear. He looked up to see Jewel, his servant succubus, approaching him, swearing a hips back and forth. Your news? Karen has been taken care of? Good. Any complications? Her daughter Lauren is looking for her as we speak. She's a very determined woman, so I doubt that she will give up searching easily. Before he could respond to her, Grub came forward to kneel before him. My lord, I have returned. It's about time. I have, an, I have come bearing good news. I have taken care of Lauren and her party. They are now imprisoned in the human city. Actually not. Were you really able to capture them that easily? Yes, my lord. Jewel frowned across the arms. She knew that Frost would not be liking the news, but she could not keep it to herself. But they aren't in prison. None of them are. Frost's gaze was indiscernible, but the air was thick with tension in the ensuing silence. Care to elaborate? Exactly that. They are not in prison. They are waltzing around freely. Gob simply scoffed. Even if they aren't, they have been dealt with. My plans are going perfectly. It doesn't matter which side they end up on, or where they are right now. They are going to trigger a war between the humans and the elves just as we want it. Tell me again how Lauren's involvement in this will help us. She was supposed to be imprisoned. Simple, my lord. They will be at the heart of the conflict, not us. We will be able to begin our invasion freely, and there's a good chance that Lauren will be killed in the struggle between the two warring races. They will be distracted fighting against each other, and with their usual and with their usual group fatality is nearly guaranteed. Frost remained silent, considering the explanation carefully, trying to calculate the potential repercussions and what could go wrong. Grub's plan was entirely foolproof, but it did sound surprisingly thorough, considering who had crafted it. I approve of these plans. Let us see how far they succeed. And they had better succeed, Grub. Do I make myself clear? Transparent, my lord. Can we at least send someone to watch over Lauren and her party? They have gained a new ally already. They could be more dangerous than we think. You speak the truth. Make it so. As I have said before, you do not have to worry. I have taken care of that matter as well. What do you mean? As I said, my lord, there is already someone watching over them very closely. Everything will go according to plan. I have made sure of it. Wait. Draco's a spy? Or is it the dwarven girl? Well, probably not the dwarven girl, right? Although she wanted us to be imprisoned. Maybe it is the dwarven girl. For your sake, it had better. Okay. Let's take a look at the camp. I've never been into the elves forest. It's huge and has extra cities inside of it. Wow. All this time I just thought the elves lived in trees or something. There were a few hollowed out trees, but yes, the civilization has surpassed my expectations too. And it's pretty. The flowers glow. Let's be friendly. Yes, it's a truly magical place. I would love to live there if I could. Not me. It's nifty and all, but I still need to be in a big city. I get antsy when I'm not. Why's that? The trees don't have anything you want? Pfft. It's more than just that. The city is the city feels more alive to me than this place. Lots of people everywhere, not just plants. That's what I want. Okay. So uh, is it true that the big lady is a princess? Yes, of the Amazons in the West. Wow. Dora's eyes glimmered. Does she live in a big glittery castle, lots of gold and such? Mm, not particularly. The citadel is made of stone. The royals prize fur and pelts above weak metals. Weak? Gold and silver are precious metals. They're pretty and sell for a ton of coins. Yes, but the Amazons have no use for a metal that they can't make a weapon out of. Gold is rather soft. I guess that's true. How boring. So it's just about war with her then? No. More or less, that's how her culture is. Strength is their highest virtue. Oh, I see. I guess she ain't like a princess that I was imagining. I suppose not, but she is still a powerful ally. That's true and all, but will she be able to give me a fancy reward? Amazons make excellent bows. I think she'd give you one of the best. 
And your bow? Hmm, I think I'd actually like that. Okay, sounds good to me. Um, well, that's just my guess. But Dora was already daydreaming about her new weapon to be. When you said you couldn't leave Grimoire because of your job, you never said what your job was. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I suppose not. Saren waited for a follow-up, but Dora didn't continue. Well, what is the job that you left behind? Oh, nothing really, just, uh, transporting goods. I was a transporter. Aren't you a little small to carry much? I've carried stuff twice my size, but I usually just carry really important things. So it's not too much to handle at all. Okay, let's be friendly. I'm confused. What exactly did you transport? Uh, just things. Pretty things, shiny things, expensive things. And where did you transport them to? My home? <laughs> Dora, did people know you were taking their stuff? Saren gave Dora a disapproving look. Look, I know it sounds bad, but it's not. I ain't a thief or anything. I'm just in the business of collecting stuff. Really cool stuff, no matter where it is. What? If there was a cool vase and some wounds, no one would get a huffin about a researcher taking it. If it's someone else's prob it's if it's someone else's property, not yours. Dora pouted. I knew I shouldn't have told you anything. What else? Oh hi again. I guess that's it. We've exhausted that. Okay. What about you? You call yourself a fire mage, but why not practice the other elements as well? Eh? They're no fun. Fire is what's fun. Any particular reason why? Fire is warm and cozy and so deadly and unpredictable and pretty to look at. And you can do this. Boosh. Did I explain everything? Well, let's joke. You left our dragons. Right, yes. I like to pretend to be a dragon while as a boy. Roar and such. Okay. I have to know something. Why did you follow Laura and me to Grimoire after we saved you? Follow you? Follow, he says. Follow, indeed. Okay, yes, I followed you. And? You two obviously ran from the Empire, and you were heading straight for its biggest city. And what happened was totally what I thought would happen. You were worried about us? Why didn't you just warn us? Hey, you didn't want me around, remember? I'm sure you could have at least mentioned it without earning Lauren's complete wrath. That's not all. Anyway, I liked you guys. You did. You didn't. Well, I knew. You, you didn't. Well, you knew I was part elf and you didn't care. I don't understand. Is that very pe peculiar? Well, yeah. You were in a, in, in a human. You were human in Empire territory. I was surprised I wasn't dragged to jail. Well, that's another thing. Amazons are humans too. You know. From, you know, race-like, from a race standpoint, they're not elves, they're not dwarves, they're humans. It's just that they just happen to be humans where females lead society. But still, humans. Anyway, I was surprised I wasn't dragged to jail. What? Why? It's the Emperor's favorite pastime. That's really horrible. Yeah, but when I'm with you guys, I don't really fear all that stuff. Saren wondered just how bad his experience had been with people that Lauren's actions towards him seemed welcoming. Anything else? Nothing's new with me. Okay. Hi, Lauren. We are now teamed with the Druid. I have never met one of a kind before. She's very interesting. And beautiful. Lauren's mouth clamped and uh, shut as she gave him a look. Yes, that too. But can we trust her? I feel as if I can. She seems to be open and honest and almost harmless. Yet with her magic she is definitely not. Let's be friendly. I feel like she will be a helpful ally, especially since she has high connections with the elves. Yes, her position in the forest nation will help us pass through freely. However, we must be wary that she does not attempt to sway us from uh, with an elf agenda. We, we are not to be her tools. Do you really think she would do that? Use you, I mean? Lauren was silent for a moment. Not particularly. I consider that option with everyone. It must be terrible not to trust anyone. Lauren swallowed, blinked, then looked away. Okay. You had mentioned before that your mother was very private. Were you close to her? That's a very personal question. 
Uh, yes, mistress. Ron shifted her weight and looked away. She's the queen. She was busy. Of course, she would not have time to confide in me. I'm her kin, and so I must be taught to be strong. Babes who need coddling are weak. She has made me a very strong person, and I have no regrets. Sarah could not help but catch the glimmer of sadness in Lauren's eyes, but she masked it well. And you did not need a mother as well. Sarah had been told that his mother was a respected Amazon scout, but he did not hold any memories of her. Like all male Amazon children, he was raised in servitude rather than as a citizen. No, ma'am. And it shows you are stronger for it. I... Sarah almost bit his tongue from speaking his mind, but Lawrence seemed in a tolerant mood. I don't think family ties weaken us. I believe they give us ultimate strength. Lauren slowly turned to stare him down. She blinked. For you, maybe. Not for Amazons. Her body language made it clear that the discussion was over. We should break camp soon. There's much to be done. Okay. What about you? You're a druid? That's correct. I'm sorry, but what exactly is a druid? Oh, well, others usually call us forest sprites, even if that is not entirely true. I'm not particularly sure how best to describe my nature. I'm not truly a sprite like the nymphs, but I'm also born different from humans and elves. I feel as, I, as if I'm one with the forest, as if I am the forest, like I'm her voice. But the term druid has been applied to anyone who studies and is capable of forest magic, and that is what my lineage is called. I know it's common to think of me as a magical creature born from a flower, but druids are similar to both human and elves. I was born from my mother's womb, not a giant flower like a nymph. Oh, we could Romans her too? Would, uh... That's kinda inappropriate, though. <laughs> I stopped... I stopped the, the princess from having fun with nymphs, and now I'm hitting on another girl. Um, uh, well, let's try it. <laughs> I, I've, I'm, I'm a terrible person, I know, I'm sorry. So, druids often take non-druid mates. Lilith's cheeks began to redden. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm really not. There aren't many of us to judge that sort of habit. But I do know that I did not have a father, and neither did my mother. Druids just become. How? When? Whenever the forest deems. I know that sounds frightening, frightening, but it's a blessing. You seem to exist as if on an entirely different plane. No, 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 please don't think of me that way. I'm really not that different from you. I bleed and cry and laugh and laugh. She choked on the last word and looked away somberly. Then I think we're exactly alike. Mirth looked back up at him and smiled softly, a glimmer in her eye. Yes, I think so too. And yeah, we got one fifth of affection. And I'm a terrible person. You're called the Elder Druid, what does that mean? The elves are governed by a group of elders, but the force is governed by the Elder Druid. That is a bit, a bit confusing, I'm sorry. Yeah, double standards all the way, my friends. All the way. Since the elves inhabit the forest, we coexist. It has been this way since the forest was just a simple sapling. There are other druids in the forest, but I am the elder because my mother was before me. Do you hold any power over the elves? I would not say that I do, but they do listen to me carefully when I speak of matters important to the forest. They do not take more than they need, and the forest abides them. It is very symbiotic. Do you really feel pain when the forest is disturbed? Yes. Oh, yes. Is it bad? It depends on how much the forest hurts. When someone dies or is damaged out of... When something dies or is damaged out of balance, the forest cries. Cutting down a whole tree will hurt more than cutting off a single branch. The worst pain, even worse than fire, is the feel of a demon in her midst. Demons carry with them a void of life. They slowly kill everything around them. Having such a creature in the forest is beyond torture. So it is beyond pain. And that is why the Dark Elves were expelled. Yes, for the most part. The actions have branded them exiles, but their blood kept them that way. But it's true that today's 
Dark elves do not inflict as much pain as a demon itself. I cannot be sure, actually. Sometimes I'm surprised when I'm told uh, that dark elves enter the forest. Other times I know immediately. We should really focus on the task at hand, don't you agree? Okay, so I guess I talked to all of them. So we will be calling it a video and we will continue in the next one. So thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.